Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about our stories in time. What is our lifetime all about? How can we take our soul journey and reflect it back as a character in a novel to be able to tell a story so others are able to connect with the concepts that we are all experiencing these days? We all are saying, I need some answers. I don't know what's going on. The world is changing. What is this about? I'm having these questions. Who am I? Where are we going? What are we doing? How are we getting along this way? What is our road and our path all about? Many times people say, just give me the answers. Give me the tool. Give me some of those little herbs that I'll smoke and I'll be good to go and I'll know all the answers. I'll come back and I'll tell you. I'll be the prophesizer and all will be well. And truly, in essence, this is really an individual journey. What is the world about? Many times people have even said to me, hey, it's all an illusion. I don't know. Sometimes I give herbs to people, and they say, what's it going to do for me? And I'll say, I don't know. I just have a sense it might be something that would like to dance with you. Let me know what it does. Still others say, I need some answers. I need to travel. I need to go to a religious place. I need to be in the energies around people who could tell me a story, help me engage, and be able to open up my senses, my wisdom, and my knowledge. What we're going to be talking about today is a novel that is absolutely fabulous. As I call it, this New Age type of novel in which the concepts of today, the stories, the questions we are asking reflected in the characters in a different dimension in time, taking along on a journey and helping us to explore just as a child's book, a young adult book, or perhaps even a textbook would take us along. It's all woven all together. Today my guest is Janice Harper. Her book is Jonas in the Mountain, a metaphysical love story. And we were going to go on an adventure today and see what explorations we can find with many concepts we're having the thoughts about. Janice, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, I'm so excited and happy to be here, Dr. Jeanette. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you here today because talking in the concepts of today, sometimes people say it's getting weary. There's so much information out there about do this, do that, you know, where you go wrong and all those like kind of uh, self-help books, you know, mm-hmm. per se. Mm-hmm. But really, your book is, takes us on a great adventure. Yes? Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you for that. Um, it does. It, it's, it's a novel. Uh, it's ostensibly fiction, but there are many other elements in it. Um, but I did not want to write a solely self-help kind of book. There is an element in there through a character who discovers expressive arts therapy to bring her teachings home, her metaphysical teachings home. But, um, yeah, yeah, um, it is an adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's so vitally important because not everybody has the same experiences. So if we can sit down and if we can write um, so many different ways about death or about dimensions Mm -hmm. or time or control or karma or helping others, just as you share in your book, it's uh, many of the different ways. It's almost as if we light up something in our knowing. We light up something in our imagination. Or else we kind of like step into the unknown and say, hey, take me for a ride. Take me for a dance. And as soon as I opened up your book, you know, Jonas and the Mountain, it was like we're going on an adventure. We're going for a dance in the cosmic ethers, so to speak. And right there, you're in full-fledged, Yes. 
Mm, I, I hope so. I have received that kind of response that it is engaging. Um, yeah. And what you spoke of regarding the individual's entrance into their own knowing, that, that really is, is what I'm going for in this novel that I really hope that it will not only engage readers in a, in a adventure kind of way, but also allow them to, to open up to themselves, to their own innate knowledge right. and vitality and creativity and find their own answers or, um, or mm-hmm. be, be triggered by something in my book. Um, maybe more, maybe new questions, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 What I really think about it is, it's about, um, just as I said, it could be written as a young adult book also, because that was when we were free to be able to go on adventures, to not always have to know the answers, and to explore. Do you think your book is truly about a seeker's journey? Yes, definitely. Um, and why I, I would think it's not perhaps, um, for young adults is because the the protagonist Jonas um, finds himself in that place that many of us have found ourselves where his world has just shattered it's fallen mm-hmm. apart he's lost his job he's lost his wife um, and that kind of thing tends mainly to occur as, as one gets older or in one's midlife and that that prompts him like it does for many to um, to go to India <laughs> but it also right. the, the shattering of his world the breaking down of it um, is of course a gift like all breakdowns are like all of the, the, the biggest challenges and he it creates an opening for him to walk through free and unfettered by his um, his usual life structures into mm-hmm. a, a new world a uh, new yeah. exploration of himself and and um yeah and spirituality and metaphysics and boy a lot it, he gets taken on a journey through two two different um two different ways of seeing truth hmm. you know i think also to the idea is that we've all been riding along with these old truths beliefs and tools of the past and right now, mm-hmm. we are really, as you said, you know, you kind of step through that doorway and you can hear that door slam shut behind you and you go, oh, darn, what now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but in essence, just to become that seeker, it's like, oh, things show up. It's sort of like someone will come up and say, hey, do you know what Chinese medicine is? Or, hey, you know what? I really don't want that mm-hmm. anymore. I want some tea. Or you'll have others that will say, you know, I'm going to go sit down and park my butt in front of the Internet and explore myself away. Mm. And mm-hmm. I think that's so great, no matter what shows up for them, to say, wow, mm-hmm. tell me more, because there's so much potential out there. I don't think there's mm-hmm. any way we could say that um, anything is right or wrong. It's just up for the taking right now, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And the way you described it i i resonate with that it's like a, a following of the following the breadcrumbs or, or mm-hmm. seeing whatever is is opening in your life and just going with that um yeah and it's interesting the the use of the word seeker um i jonas never actually sees himself as a seeker he doesn't want to be a seeker he sees mm-hmm. you know all these seekers doing all of their stuff um, in at the holy mountain of Arunachala in Tamil Nadu, um, in India, where this takes place, um, and there is also something to do with the word seeker that implies a doing. You know that that you right. you you are needing something. Do you think mm. Janice, perhaps that sometimes seeker means outside of self versus Jonas is really trying to find inside of self? Hmm, that's interesting. Perhaps. Yeah, I I think yeah it does imply doing something in the world, um, right. a seeking for something. Mm-hmm. Whereas for for many of us, it's when we stop doing, <laughs> when we stop right. doing that in the world, um, when we stop looking and needing and wanting, which really creates more of an attachment to the world. Um, right. That's that's when 
that's when it all starts happening, when we let go of the seeking, when we let go of, of any kind of wanting or desire. And as you said, just, or as I said, following the breadcrumbs, but, but as you um, right. indicated, and just, just even sitting in front of a computer and, and, yeah, letting that take you somewhere. Yeah. 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 You know, it's so interesting. I can distinctly remember, I think it was a few years ago, I kept hearing this word um, peach, peach, peach. And I was thinking, oh, I just wanted some peaches, you know. And this does, get, this does go somewhere. It's okay. But um, I just kept thinking peach. And I'm thinking, oh, I, I love the peaches in Pennsylvania, but Georgia only has them. And here in the south, you know, in Louisiana, the peaches are horrible. You know, they, they ship them green and then they never ripen. And then I said, oh, well, I'll get a can of peaches. And I got a can of peaches, put it in the refrigerator. Actually, it's still there probably from two years ago. But, oh, no, it's uh-huh. not because I threw it out after the hurricane. But it was there till then. Mm-hmm. But at any rate, um, I, I, then I think in peaches. And then it's like, oh, okay, let's let this go. And then one day I was looking at something and I was, something was bothering me physically. I don't remember what it was. And I was mm-hmm. scanning some TCM, traditional Chinese medicine herbs. And, mm-hmm. and it came mm-hmm. up, peach pit. And I went, oh, mm-hmm. there's that word peach again. <laughs> so... I said, oh, that sounds like that's been what's been bothering me for a little while. And I said, darn, it took you a long time to get me to this message, but I got, (sighs) you know. Mm, And then so I purchased purchased the herb, and I said, and I was thinking, oh, how much do I need? How much do I have to take it? And I'm thinking, I'm the most noncompliant person that there is in this world. You know, I get it, (laughs) and I let it speak to me. So at any rate, Mm. I got it, and I took like three doses, and that was it, and it's still sitting here. And it's like just a Mm. reminder that look at the journey you took. You trusted, number one. You let go, Mm. and you you were in awareness, and you remained open. How Mm -hmm. important are those four aspects to this Mm -hmm. process? Uh, Completely, absolutely important. Yeah, I think the um, if you can be like the and this comes up in in the book Jonas in the Mountain, be like the the hollow reed, um, the the hollow bamboo that's open mm-hmm. to or really an open channel. Yeah, and that has everything to do with with being completely in the present, um, or as you said, in awareness, because in the present you're not. You're not distracted by thoughts if you are completely in the present. You are just letting it all happen, and and right. yeah, and answers answers are there. <laughs> uh-huh. They're they're there as much as anything else is there, and they just they have a way, yes, of coming when you when you need them if you are that open channel and if you are present, and and um, which which is difficult for some people to yes. to be in that state and that's partly what I um hope to achieve in or right. give the reader in this novel too are our various ways of getting into that state or becoming open um yeah to to whatever is there for the taking <laughs> and right, because it's all there for the taking <laughs> yeah because not everyone could have a knowing like I did but they can also still go on your journey and they could put two and two together and say that's how I hear it. This is how I see it. And now I can experience it in my own unique way. That's really mm-hmm. our goal, is to be able to show different aspects of where we are going and how these new tools play out. You know, I think sometimes people will say, but I'm reading it, but I don't understand it. But then you give an example and you say, okay, I understand it, but I need to read more about it. So we're really forming a triad today. And we're saying now form your own experience. Isn't that um, what we really hope, you know, going forward in the year 2022 is that people start to say, I don't know, but I'm open. And they make that step out, and I think we'll hear a lot of doors slam behind each other this year, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. Yeah, it'll be pretty I, I interesting. See, yeah, I kind of see what's going on out there as a reflection of what's in here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I tend to look at 
it in an individual way because on one level mm-hmm. that's all there is. So mm-hmm. um, I tend to shy away from thinking about or talking about that kind of stuff because um, like what's going to happen next year or what about COVID or elections or climate change or because I I think um, on one level that is a reflection of of an individual's um, inner state. If that makes you, sense. I don't know right, if that makes because sense. Because I think that's exactly true because what we will hear is the essence that people will say, we've been through something in the past few years and now we are going to see what are we going to create going forward. So it's their energetic kind of door that will be closing because they will say it's now time for all to create. Really, the world is looking for something to create. In your book, when you talk about your characters, they talk about after death. A lot of times, Mm -hmm. you know, if you look back in the past few years, many people said death came and there's a lot of different versions of what their experience was, what things have happened to them. And they're not quite yet ready to look back in retrospect to see exactly how it played out, what the gifts, the benefits, the um, Mm. impressions, Mm. the the spirits, the still connection to the spirit world, uh, the still knowing that energy is, is eternal, those kinds of ideas. They're not quite ready for that yet, but I think we're coming to the place where a lot of these words are starting to show up. Do you think? Mm, yeah, yeah, that's so interesting because this is how I can talk about this through death because um, I think with, with the pandemic, it has brought death right up close. And I think that is a huge gift. And I'm not meaning to um, to say, oh, Mm-hmm. Uh, to say anything about people who've died or people who are grieving those who have died, etc. Mm-hmm. But just bringing the awareness of of death into our consciousness, I think, is something that is extremely important because I, death is the great mystery. It's the great unknown mm-hmm. and the unknowable. Um, it is the big picture, really. So right. when we are up up against it, whether it's through um, our own illness or accident, or someone close to us dying, um, or even just contemplating it, there is something magical that occurs because it disrupts our usual day-to-day um, understanding or existence and the distraction um, or, or hypnosis, <laughs> if you will, mm-hmm. with, with the physical world. Um, it, it suddenly explodes that. Um, Again, whether it's you who is who is sitting in that, um, or sitting with that, or um, or someone you know, so I, I think that's that's been a, a big gift of the pandemic, and I I haven't heard it um, talked about because people still don't really like talking about death in um, right. in a way other than just let's let's not you know as a negative that's a negative thing <laughs> you know right. let's talk well, about I- life. But, right, and that's where exactly bringing, looping back to what I had said is that um, we will now come into a new story of eternal. We will come into reincarnation. We will come into in understanding our life story was a chapter in a book versus just being the book and all of a sudden it's over with. You know, so many times mm-hmm. people believe that. Our essence of our life story, they have to hurry up and be able to create it, to leave a legacy, to write out your obituary, you know. And if it doesn't play out that way, how horrific it's going to be. And they frantically run to their last um, days, weeks, months, years to be able to leave that picture, you know, in people's Mm -hmm. minds of who or what they were. Instead, when we get into the point of being on this, kind of philosophical, spiritual, esoteric kind of journey, you understand so much more. You don't have that fear of death because you know you're eternal. You know that you're a chapter. Uh, You know that this, too, will transition and transfigure. Um, And also, too, you know that um, you've been here before, you've done it before, and you're good to go, and you're not – that fear mongrel doesn't seem to be um, so scary so much, do you think? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, and it's it's the fear that's really 
really the issue, isn't it, for for, mm-hmm. for most people? Um, mm-hmm. And and that fear has to do with really nothing, because it has. I think it has to do with the wanting to hold on to to what you know. <laughs> Again, right. because it, we're always afraid of the un, or we, we're told um, mm-hmm. by some that we're afraid of the unknown. Um, but yeah, if you can open to and get a sense or a whiff of um, of death, then you don't have to hold on to all that stuff in in your well, life. Well, I think um, I think Janice, I, I I hope in the near future that so many of those who did survive um, and did you know as we say near death experiences will start opening up and sharing their stories what they saw, felt, what they heard, you know, and the essence kind of to speak. Because then that will start to begin the conversation to say, ah, okay, we got this. Look at how many more people are coming out. It's almost as if it's an awakening of those aspects Mm -hmm. of self so that we can progress further. I think the idea Mm -hmm. is is that um, we pretty much have been living lives believing that this material world is our life. When in essence we're saying it's so much more than that. Your book and your characters in your book truly travel all of those questions and stories of a spiritual life that people are looking at. You know, let's talk about your dreams. Let's talk about dimensions. We can talk about out of body travel. We can talk about karma. You also mm-hmm. talk about, you know, um, all of these things about how when you step into that unknown, it's a different kind of story. It's almost mm-hmm. as if. In this present moment in time, we are now being asked to create a new chapter in the book while we're still in Mm -hmm. this same existence. And I mean, if you Mm -hmm. look at the past, it's always been one chapter in your, your lifetime was your one chapter. But now it's almost as if, hey, you're not what you were 20, 40 years ago. You're something else. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. create. And that's kind of spooky, but it's kind of, wow, this is, it's mm-hmm. almost like you've been handed, you know, something better than a lottery ticket to be able to explore. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, back to Jonas's uh, breakdown, that yeah. when everything broke down, then there was this, this new this new path, this, this new uh, wide open world. I think that is indeed what, what as a collective, as a global collective, right. that we've just experienced like a, mm-hmm. a major breakdown. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, so this yeah. is such a beautiful thing. And yeah, so everything we knew before is shattering, and that has to do. Also, and then death looms closer, and with death, it's the the opening of of possibility. And um, yeah, you mentioned oh, there's a few things that you. That, that that have resonated Take your time because I don't remember them either. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just Go ahead. Out. Take your uh, time. The, the near <laughs> the near death yeah. experiences uh, lately. So I I spent some time on Facebook because you know I'm promoting Jonas in the Mountain, uh, and lately people have been posting about uh, others near death experiences like YouTube, ah. um, and it seems to be this explosion of um, mm-hmm. of people talking about their near death experiences. Um, in, in an interview I did recently, there was talk about the in-between lives. Um, there's uh, the soul journey. There's a person who, who um, I forget the name of it, Dr. Newton, who, um, mm-hmm. who uh, there is a hypnosis people go into and they talk about between lives. Yeah, so all of that is happening, coming up more perhaps. And, yeah, and another thing, uh, it, sorry if this seems rather disjointed because I wanted no, to know that's address. okay. That's another, it's, it's another, fine. Another thing that you said, it, I find it really um, intriguing that you you speak of um, life as as chapters in a book, because what I'm what's happening in the Jonas and the Mountain book, it, it, Jonas and the Mountain is almost trying to transcend itself as a book. Mm-hmm. For example, part way through the book, we it says that Jonas is at the beginning of his book. Um, one of one of the early teachings by the psychic teacher Anamika is that our life is um, 
is symbolic and whatever whatever comes up is there for us um, mm-hmm. specifically um, to learn from and to grow um, in order to become more of ourselves and that if we want to understand our lives in a um, in a full way one can interpret the symbols just like one does when one is in a when one is doing a dream analysis for example, you know, right. we wake up and we go, oh, okay, let's 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 um, let's see what was going on in this dream and and uh, take a look at the symbols and what do they mean to me. Well, mm-hmm. she, Anamika, is is proposing that that is, um, or this is a technique um, that that one does is looks at one li- one's life as a as a novel <laughs> or mm-hmm. as a movie or a play, and 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 get special meaning the the messages through the through the symbols um what keeps coming up in your life what what are the main themes <laughs> what are the main metaphors um right. what are the repeating symbols you know we all have these in our lives just like a novel does and so mm-hmm. if we can interpret that and she gives several exercises um expressive arts exercises that um that give one that opportunity to interpret one's um one's life as a story um, and right so the idea is to disrupt um disrupt your immersion in the story to stand back and see it take a have a different perspective uh, mm-hmm. eventually we're on top of the mountain and we can we have a have a very different perspective a wider perspective um but in the book, so there's there's that there's interpreting one's life by stepping back, and the novel itself attempts to do that by referring to itself. And I used to mm-hmm. teach, um, I used to teach university and college level English, and in postmodernism, that's that's the thing. It's called self. Re- the, the text is self reflexive, in, in that when it's a novel, it refers to itself. It brings you out of the novel, and you go, "Oh, right, I'm, I'm reading a novel." <laughs> so right, that is right. something. Yeah, that's something that I do that occurs in the novel a couple of times. Um, at the end of the novel, we kind of find that oh, Jonas, Jonas is writing this novel. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or earlier on, it's like, oh, he's at the beginning of his book. So, yeah, the the novel attempts to become something more, Jonas in the Mountain, the novel, attempts to become something more than a book in the world. It, it, it attempts to be, to transcend itself um, in much the same way that, that you, when you're talking about chapters in a life, that's, um, that's what I hope that, um, that readers will on one level receive from it. You know, I think that's really um, interesting, too, because all of my night times is all out of body. You know, pretty much when I lay my head down, I'm gone. You know, I do most mm. of my spiritual work in my dream state, you know, mm. and I always call it travel time, you know. And mm. it's funny because um, when I come back in, sometimes it's difficult to bring my body all the way in and I wake up and I'm sore and everything hurts and everything because I've been in another space and time. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes, mm-hmm. too, people find that when they're watching a movie on TV or they're reading a book and they totally immerse mm-hmm. themselves, their essence, into mm-hmm. the work and they become immersed in it Mm -hmm. And then when they come away from it, pieces and fragments stay with you. So in essence, Mm -hmm. even if they're reading your book and they may not even know it, something may show up Mm -hmm. at a later time that's playing out and you're going, I don't know where that came from or what it was, but it's showing up. You know, Mm -hmm. it's so interesting. I'm in my late 60s and there's so many times people will say to me, you told me something 30 years ago and it took 30 (laughs) years for it to show up. (laughs) <laughs> and I said, oh, well, cool. I, 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 You always told me I was ahead of my time. I guess so, you know. <laughs> so I think the idea yeah. is, is that sometimes when you immerse yourself in a book or a novel like yours, it's about taking that journey and just drift into the ethers, so to speak, and not mm-hmm. try to write down every page and take notes and, you know, try to make it work for your life. It's just about step mm-hmm. into the energy of it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um and of course, 
each reader will receive that will read the book differently. I mean, that's, that's right, that's, right. Of course, um, and there I've heard from some readers who say, "Wow, I really am excited about do." At the back, there is an appendix of Anamika's exercises and meditations and activities um, for the reader to engage in on her own if she wants. Um, and mm-hmm. I've heard from readers that they're just they're really excited um, to do it. Um, but they're going to wait till till later, <laughs> you know, or right. or else some some might try something um, one of those activities even in while um, Anamika is giving it to her students. Um, I've had a reader say that oh, I was doing it as well. I I find right. that when you are immersed and open, um, that's when all the the juicy synchronicities occur. <laughs> right, <laughs> which is yeah, which is of course. Um, a connection to other dimensions, and, and which really shows that that you, um, some you know you're you're seeing the glitches in the matrix. <laughs> right. Well, when, you know what? When a those synchronicities people... occur, so, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, because I think a lot of times people will say, but I really don't see it in my life, and it's because you're looking for it in the lower dimension. You're never going to see it there. You know, you have to step out of the other frequency. In other words. You can't force AM radio on your car radio if you aren't within the frequency band of it. No matter how you try, it won't happen. No matter how you try to cure cancer because you say so, it's not going to happen. You know, um, or it's not going to happen that um, you're never going to have a need for money. It's not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think the idea is that... Mm. When you're mm-hmm. in the frequency in which that is already playing out or that that potential or possibility is there, once you step just as you do, you cr- go to that crack in the matrix, the crack in your heart, the crack in your soul, whatever it is, the crack in your armor, once you go through that crack, you're in another space and time that you can see, seek, feel, own, dance with whatever you want something differently so i think when we say Mm -hmm. we're seekers we're just knowing that that old that we are in no longer works and what we're seeking is you are wishing or hoping or traversing through that crack so a seeker is not always having an answer a seeker is saying i'm traversing the crack yes yeah and and that crack can sometimes be thrust upon us like the pandemic <laughs> or like yeah. a, like an illness or or um Jonas's life breaking apart um right. losing your job and and people close to you and and your partner um yeah so that that is a a way of um that that's something that seems to occur to us but mm-hmm. of course the question is does anything really occur to us uh-huh. Um, regarding what you said about um, the frequency, mm-hmm. to me the AM, um, and I'm a you know part part I, part of me I'm an intellectual on on you know and I have been a lot of my life, but I'm also spiritual and creative. I find the AM frequency to be the head, <laughs> the mind, the that intellectual uh-huh. frequency where you can go you can go some distance, but you can't get to what we're talking about, what you were talking about. Right. Um, that wider right. dimension. So so the psychic teacher Anna Mika in um in my novel, she expresses it this way. She speaks of um she she makes a she doesn't critique, she makes an oblique reference to the book The Secret. You remember that book? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and about, you know, attracting and manifesting and bringing things into your life. So for some, when people became, that was a very popular book, and there's there's other books that that um, come out of that. Um, Anna Mika says, no, you can't, you know, work really hard and, and just, you know, do a couple of techniques and, you know, concentrate on something and manifest it into your life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. What you need to do is... Is the way that works is it's a conjunction with your greater self, really mm-hmm. that your larger self um, that you are creating, and if you can open open the channel or open up 
um, or turn the channel in your in your analogy in your right. MFM analogy. If you can open up to that wider understanding or dimension or frequency um, where you are connecting with your greater self and something is not constrained by time and space, that is where you can see what's happening and that is where um, you see that what's going on is what you want, that you are creating. That shows you that you are creating it, how you are creating it. It's not this simple... um, Okay, if I concentrate on this, then this will happen. Right. right. Well, because I think <laughs> I think also too the idea is, is that we got um that was I call it um a preempt. It was kind of like the thing in the beginning of the movie, you know. They were kind of prepping us to be able to think differently. You know, but now we're into the space mm-hmm. and time where we say um, I'm looking for, and we realize it's not material things. We realize it's not, you know, I'm going to concentrate and I'm mm-hmm. going to have a Porsche parked in my front yard. But in essence, <laughs> what we're asking for is I would like to feel in my being less stressed about whatever. Mm. And then when you take it a step backwards, then you say, I used to be stressed because blah, blah, blah happened. Then when you take it a step backward, you say, I am safe and secure. So really what we're talking about is your book is truly about rewinding and going back. Mm. Because in essence, you already have safety and security. Because then you say, but I don't know about tomorrow, I don't know about today, but then that's impermanence. We live, I mean, that's permanence. We live in an impermanent existence. So we will never have permanence in impermanence, you know. Mm -hmm. So in essence, in a way, is that if we can continue to scroll it back, then we become more peaceful people because it isn't, Mm -hmm. You. it's almost as if you're standing there and nothing's coming out of your mouth because nothing really matters in that matter of matter, of density, mm. of form, of whatever. Mm. It isn't doesn't mm. show up anymore. Have you ever mm. noticed that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, certainly. Yeah, and what you're talking about the the scrolling scrolling back to use a um a technological term or turning back. Um in my novel there's really two strands of ways to truth or two philosophies and one is a non-dualist guru in the lineage of Ramana Maharshi Hinduism Buddhism um, and there as opposed to Anamika who is a western psychic the guru D is an eastern mystic and Jonas receives teachings and really falls in love with them both um, and is trying to find how they are compatible or if they can be mm-hmm. reconciled. And for the guru, the guru D in the novel, who really is, is based on um, the guru who I fell in love with, who I met um, in India on one of my many visits there, um, it's all just, it's about sitting in the silence and stillness and just feeling your heart and feeling your existence. Um, and that that is what opens you to whatever you want to call it, source, mm-hmm. consciousness, God, the beloved, the one. Um, and that is that's about enlightenment. So that's about waking up from the dream. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you're talking about, but in, in Jonas mm-hmm. in the Mountain, in the novel, that is of issue. That's the crux of Jonas's um, dilemma, really, um, or one of his right. dilemmas, is is where is where does enlightenment? Where if 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 waking up from the dream of of reality into the capital R reality, if that's mm-hmm. if that's what we're all shooting for, if that's like the only game in town, that's the be all and the end all, then where does all this other stuff come into play? The metaphysics, the different dimensions, the reincarnation, the partners, right. souls, the um yeah, so he is he is working on reconciling that. Yeah, when you're talking about going back, turning back, that just reminded me of um of Jonas's 
time on the retreat, in this, on a silent retreat that occupies um, part of my book and his experience there, which is all all very inner, of course, um, mm-hmm. as is a lot of the book. It's an it's a inner journey. Um, yeah, that's kind of it coming back to, to source <laughs> and opening to that. Yes. Um, waking up from from the the dream of the physical and and, and breaking out of that hypnosis. Um, whereas Anamika, the psychic teacher, um, was talking about other stuff. She says, "Well, I don't know about enlightenment, <laughs> mm. but you know, I, I I'm an open channel. I get all this these messages. I get this knowledge about you know about what happens after death and about multiple dimensions and and partner selves and how all this stuff works. And, you know, and she communicates with people in other dimensions. And she's very much me as well." Um, yeah. You know, it's really interesting in what you just said. So if we could sit with this for one second. So this mm. morning I wrote an H on the left-hand side, mm. human, meaning, you know, what we were p- pre-2000, okay? We pretty much were almost illiterate to how we are speaking today. We did not have these words as knowing this this conceptual idea. Many of us, you know, and then you think back a few decades, you know, yeah, it wasn't. You go back a few decades, you know, if you think about 30s and 40s, our parents and grandparents didn't even finish grade school, you know. So in essence, they were considered that that they had not had the knowing. So now today, that's the H. And I drew a line to the right, and I said, now we are in the spot of multidimensional we are knowing past lives. We are knowing futures, just as your characters, you know, what past. I only know of the future. I only know of this or that or whatever. But I'm still here existing in the H. And then I drew another line to the right, an arrow to the right, and I said there's the over there. In other words, the essence of the spirit guides, the psychics, the intuitives of the higher realms that are our guides or whatever you might call it in just energy forms. So what are we really being asked at this time is if you look at it, we're in the middle, we're in an abyss right now. So in this abyss, we are disconnecting from the old age. We are bringing an understanding and awareness of all the way to the right of that kind of either spirit essence, you know, existence. But yet we are bringing all of them together in this moment in time. And we are human beings having multidimensional experiences, tapping into, as I do in time travel and knowing and all of this, going back into the past lives. So we're being asked to bring all of these concepts into our awareness. And it's almost as if sometimes... We're sitting down at this spiritual buffet, but we don't even know how to get from our hand to the spiritual buffet. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like Mm. all of this out there. Mm. It's as if we're being um, presented with this glitter ball of energy and and we're going Mm. to have this knowing of all of this. So Mm. it's kind of your book really takes you into that if you step back away from it. And you say, that's really where we're having this essence. And I had written that down this morning when I was talking to somebody else. And I said, Mm. what is really presenting to us? Can we be okay with it, number one? Can we understand and say, oh, that's a possibility? And can we say, okay, there are no answers. There is no tool. There is no the way. Let's just be here and see what takes place. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, I mean the the whole glitter ball thing that can be overwhelming. And mm-hmm. Jonas, um, in my novel, does feel that when he comes out of this beautiful, um, beautiful silent retreat um, with his guru D at the foot of Arunachala. Um, in Tiruvannamalai in India. And when I say beautiful, I mean, of course, there were lots of inner challenges. Everything came up, basically. And it continues to come up, all the personal stuff that he needs to cook through. That, you know, right. you, 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 um, 
you fall into the silence and stillness in your heart and and mm-hmm. then you know then stuff stuff comes up <laughs> right um, and so when he meets Anamika and Anamika presents this whole other system and is not simple um although she she i think presents it in a hopefully <laughs> i'm the writer mm-hmm. <laughs> on one level <laughs> hopefully she presents it in a in an understandable way but very different kinds of um metaphysical concepts and again about about um the illusory nature of time space and and multiple dimensions and partner selves and and um all sorts of stuff I mean, she she talks about so the, what social the, why social media is great what it has to teach us and she talks about outer space being inner space turned inside out um, mm-hmm. and all sorts of ideas so he he at one point feels his head is spin, spinning and he says oh wow this is this is like it reminds him of what he's heard about the multiverse for example um right and it it reminds him of science fiction <laughs> um, and he mm-hmm. says but he suspects that is no more fictional than anything else is um but it, there's a lot so yeah there's that he starts in, in imbibing from that that part of the buffet and it's uh yeah it, it, it's a lot what happens well i don't want to give a spoiler but what ends up right. happening is there is a reconciliation um and these two paths do come together for both anamika and jonas in a in quite a beautiful way um uh yeah so the complexity is yeah yeah do kind of well, fall away I think the idea is other. can mm-hmm. we be free enough to say okay instead of trying to place other words to be able to define it you know a lot of times people want to put mm-hmm. it in its own little category um you know so that they can contain it and digest it and it's sort of if we can just Step away from that. We don't have to digest it. We don't have to name it. We don't have to anything. And I think, too, mm. just as I'm using the words, we don't have to do again, right? Just mm. let the be be. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes that's seriously hard for so many people to do. But that's what I think we're being asked to do at that time. Do mm-hmm. you think? Yes. Yeah, back to I think what we began the conversation with, back to a, a not doing. Um, right. And I think in the Guru D in the novel says, in, in the not doing, everything gets done. Um, but yes, yeah, we are so engaged and so caught up. Um, and more in previous decades, um, with with our ambition, with reaching goals, with making money, with you know more of the material world. Um, but now with this, with the pandemic and, and everything falling apart that we trusted yeah. in as real or that we thought was real, we're seeing that that isn't. And there is stuff coming up too. Again, on a, on a more of a macrocosmic level, you know, we see right. you know, all sorts of, you know, there is the, um, the us and them forming the divisiveness between the vaxxed and mm-hmm. the anti-vaxxed. And, and so that, that's coming up in the, in the same way that for Jonas as an individual, um, stuff from his, you know, his special issues came up. So we are seeing, you know, special issues among humans at this time, mm-hmm. um, coming up in the same kind of way. Um, but yeah, we are, we are, um, there is something very special occurring with this, um, with this, uh, the rug being pulled out from under us. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> well, this, you know what? This, this gift just of this a, virus. Mm. Right. And just as we said it before, you can't exist if you want to be in one paradigm. In other words, when you traverse through that crack, you can't say, I want to put all of myself back where I was because I want all of myself yeah. to go forward. I mean, it just has, isn't. <laughs> no. So it really, yeah. um, no matter how much we try yeah. to be able to say we want to hold on to things, they have to go away. You know, um, 
it's the funniest thing. I, I've been having this thing about I know we're going somewhere. I know I'm going somewhere. I know the world is going somewhere, whatever you want to say. I just had this mm. feeling of movement. And it was like, this couch has to go, you know. And, <laughs> and I said, this couch has to go. And I've been saying that for a few years. It's got to go. It's got to go. And nobody would help me move it, right? And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, okay, one day after the hurricane, it was just like, okay, it's time for it to go. And I had asked people, oh, yeah, and then da 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 And then they never showed up. So finally one day I opened the door, and I started to push it out myself. I should not have been doing it. It was way too heavy, blah, blah. But at any rate, as soon as they opened the door and had the couch at the door, someone showed up to help. Another person mm. complaining about it, didn't want to do it, did it. But the couch mm-hmm. got out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I had in yeah. my thoughts, after looking at it in retrospective, I said it was just something that it was almost like it was um, it was like a Neanderthal thing. It was an old thing. It was something that had to go, and I needed mm-hmm. to have it removed. And with it, mm-hmm. you know, the room feels a little lighter. Um, I don't sit on it, you know, because it's not there. It's In other words... Things shift mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. It's not there for you to sit on. It's not there for you to lay on. It's not there for you to waste time on, whatever. But it was mm-hmm. something that needed to go away. Just like people say, well, I didn't need my job to go away. Well, maybe every single day, if you've noticed in mm-hmm. the past five years, you've been complaining a lot about work. Or maybe um, you didn't want to go to work or whatever it could be. And maybe work mm-hmm. heard you and said, okay, I'll find you another job. But you, you know, you don't get another job until you let go of the old one. So, in other yeah. words, we we want mm-hmm. to draw our aspects from each other and say we want it to be perfect. But it isn't perfect. But maybe it is perfection in its own way. Mm-hmm. Instead of perfect in the way the human is commanding it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, personally, you might... Uh, Again, there's a lot of me in the character Jonas as there is in Anna Mika. And I was, uh, I taught um, English at university and college level for about 20 years. Um, and then I began to encounter all sorts of obstacles and everywhere I turned. And it, it seemed that I just had to stop doing this. <laughs> right. So, right. okay, 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 the wrong way. As it says in Jonas, the wrong way, no, stop. And then uh, I... I immediately discovered expressive arts therapy, which really fit me like a glove and something that I had been longing for at a different time in my life. I was wanting, thinking of being a counselor, a therapist. And then this came, and this um, this has given me a lot, although um, it hasn't manifested in... Um, in a big thriving practice, but here it is in my novel. Anamika discovers a way to communicate her her teachings rather than just through words. She has her students and and the reader. If you're if you want to participate, she invites them to um, to feel it for themselves um, through creative writing, through movement, through right. sounding, and through the mm-hmm. expressive arts to bring it home. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's definitely a journey. I think that um, in closing, it has been a great journey for your characters. I think if you feel like you're um, you on spin cycle on the washer and one day you're just going to explode, you know, it's a great book to be able to read to say, no, you're not. You're just where you're supposed to be, and isn't it cool to be in the ethers? Mm-hmm. And uh, I Mm -hmm. think you give people permission to be wherever they are in their own space and time and let people Mm -hmm. know um, there is a different language, you know, when you that close the door behind you. There is a different Mm -hmm. way of presenting. There is a different way of breathing. There's a different way of existing. Mm -hmm. And this, too, Mm -hmm. will start to unfold, yes? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. (laughs) Yes, and and thank you for your... um, your your insight into my novel. And, yeah. 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 It was such a great time talking with you, Janice. Can you share with the listeners mm-hmm. how to find out more information about your work? Sure. So the novel that we're discussing today is called Jonas and the Mountain, a Metaphysical Love Story um, by Janice Harper. Uh, you can find it on any online bookstore, but you can also go to my website, 
which is janiceharper.ca, because I live in Canada and I'm a Canadian. <laughs> um, Janice Harper is spelled with an I-S, like Janice Joplin and Janice Ian. So my website address is J-A-N-I-S-H-A-R-P-E-R.ca. Um, also, I want to say that my publisher is Sacred Stories, sacredstories.com, and there you can find um, not only my book, but also I have created a, an eight-episode podcast where I actually read 10-minute um, excerpts from the book. Um, and in one segment, I read in the voice of the psychic teacher, Anamika, and present the activities that, that I've just been talking about and and the listener of the podcast is invited to participate as well. Um, and there's a stopping and starting of the podcast that can okay. occur. Yeah, so that's a, a, on my publisher's website too, sacredstories.com, janisharper.ca, and of course on any online bookstore, or you can ask for the novel at your local bookstore and have them order it in. Very good. Well, it was such a pleasure to have you with us today because I think uh, many people are saying, I don't know, and we're saying, oh, fantastic. I'm so glad you're here. and We welcome you in, yes? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's been a great pleasure talking to you, Dr. Jeanette. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to find out more information about Janice Harper, again, the book is Jonas in the Mountain, A Metaphysical Love Story. Please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to her website for more information. And it is about being able to say it's okay. We welcome you. Um, We're so happy you are here and just time to enjoy the dance in the ethers. And I Mm. hope that you're able to say if you need someone for guidance or support, Check out books. Check out all of the radio shows. It's 11 years. And, boy, you can really feel that that uh, kind of line and the thread that we've created over the decade of how we've been evolving. If you need more help and guidance, please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to my website. There's a free book. There's a lot of tools. And there's also a lot of stories that will be able to help you get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a pleasure to have you with us, and this is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to, and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change, into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.